come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest to take over the world one podcast at a time. That doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but no, it doesn't. Are we are we taking over other people's podcasts? Ooh, this is an idea. Do we each get one? Oh, let's start a feud. Who can we fight with? Who are we gonna take down? And then, still, we just, we, uh, then we just use just like their to... title, but it's our podcast, and we just kind of spread that way. Yeah, let's shoot for the stars. Joe Rogan, we're coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the internet radio superstars who are going to introduce themselves, starting with... Holly. Michaela. John. And I'm Colin. And hey, do us a favor, wherever you found us, go on over and hit that like, or better yet, the subscribe button. Hey, leave us a review. We'll read your reviews later uh, on uh, when we summon our mailman, Igor, in his little segment right before we wrap all this up and tell you whether or not we recommend tonight's movie, which was chosen by... John? What, what, did, what did we do to you? You hurt me, and this is my revenge. Um, so tonight. matter of fact, I believe you. I actually believe what you're saying, Sean. That wasn't even a joke. What did we what watch is this tonight? Revenge? What is this revenge for? Beast Must Die was good. Maybe it's for Phantoms. No, it's for Resident Evil. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tonight we watched Pet Cemetery Two from the year 1992. And uh, there, there's your problem right there. And directed by, <laughs> it might be uh, Mary Lambert, who we would know from. Uh, Pet Cemetery One. How, how is that possible? I know. <laughs> I know, right? We yeah. know she can do better. Like than we've seen it. Did she? Did she see the first movie? <laughs> yeah. Well, Mary Lambert, <laughs> I mean, so she was a. They uh, extracted it from her brain. She was a music video director. She got her start uh, on all those famous Madonna videos from uh, like, uh, like a Prayer and. Material Girl and all that stuff. She did stuff for Drama Rama. I don't know. Just tons of like 80s uh, music videos and then broke into uh, movies. Yeah. Rod Stewart, uh, uh, The Arrhythmics, Janet Jackson, Lots of Madonna. Yeah. Sting. Mm hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny because now that you say that, I. I get vibes. I get mi- music video vibes in this movie for sure. Oh, yeah. This felt like, for sure. like one like grungy nineteen ni- early nineteen nineties music. Yeah, uh, she also directed Especially- Halloween Town too. Yes, she did. <laughs> That's awesome. I know. <laughs> she um, also did um, the In Crowd. I don't know if you ever seen that one. The In Crowd, the movie. Yeah, the In oh, Crowd. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. With, with like uh, Susan Ward and. And it's about the popular kids, and they're just they're yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking everybody. And yeah, that movie, which that I remember was that movie yeah. after this, right? That was uh, way after. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah. She was trying to redeem was, her what, career. Late nineties, early two thousands. <laughs> that was two uh, thousands, I think. Oh, two thousand. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Um, all right, so I mean, obviously, if you're a fan of this show, we have now covered. Oh, this is the third Pet Cemetery movie that we've covered. We did the original, which was one of our, I think, highest rated episodes uh, for that period of time. All you guys love Pet Cemetery. Then Actually. we did the uh, the remake when that came out, uh, the blasphemous Pet Cemetery which remake. I, I am still shocked at um, not just like. Not just our listeners, but just the overall acceptance of that movie. So many people like that movie, and it's shocking to me. But the people that like it don't like horror movies. It's not horror people that like it. I don't know, because we've had a lot of listeners write in and be like, hey, I didn't li- I didn't mind it. I kind of liked it. And it's like, really? If you want to really? hear what rage sounds like coming through your headphones, listen to that episode. We are working <laughs> up on that episode. We are not happy. Well, who knows? That Didn't we come happen. straight from the theater? Yeah, it was something like, yeah, that, or, yeah, it was either that night or the next day. We took a freak yeah. show field trip, it was, saw it when it was new. I think it was the next day, but yeah. we were very angry, and there was lingering yeah. effects from that movie. 
That was inspired, of course. The remake came at us because Stephen King was a big deal again there for a brief period of time because of the success of it. Everybody was like, we got to do Stephen King again. We had Dark Tower and then Pet Cemetery. But I don't know, Salem's Lot, I think, is in the works and got halted because of uh, the COVID uh, you know, pandemic. So, but back in 1990, what'd you say? This is 1992, right? Yes. That's when this Three years after out. the original. Uh, I think the person who's most responsible for this is a guy named Ralph Singleton. He's the producer. He produced the first one. And then I think in between these two movies, he directed um graveyard shift which was the other stephen king uh oh god the one with the the mill with the rats in the base you guys haven't seen this brad dorf is not seen this, no. oh god that one's terrible too um <laughs> so he got it did he get it in the mind it's like ha, i've directed now i know what we should do for this movie and he kind of went up so isn't it. sleepwalkers right around this time too yeah because that's like 93 i think yeah. And our ninety three. Then we had uh, we also had Lawnmower Man, which was one that famously uh, Stephen King sued to get his name taken off of. Uh, he he also, has to get his name taken off of this movie too. Yeah, because what were they going to call it? Stephen King's Pet Cemetery Two, which you can't do because it has no it's relation not. to any uh, any uh, character. Well, I mean, it's it's not a continuum. This is not uh, his stuff at all. So no. I guess this is okay. So this is kind of where I wanted to start on this, right? Is the idea, um, forget the movie that you just saw. All right. Wow. <laughs> okay. So Pet Cemetery comes out in 1989. It's a big financial success. Um, well, I mean, I don't know. Was it? It made like fifty million dollars in nineteen eighty nine money. The new one made uh, like one hundred and thirteen million dollars. So it is the most successful Pet Cemetery movie. This one made seventeen million dollars. Um, but okay, so it, it, forget that you saw this. So the mo- first movies come out and it's a big hit. So what? What do you? What does the audience want to see? Because you're like, well, we got to make another one. We got to make another one of those Pet Cemetery movies. What does the audience want to see? What are the ingredients that you have to have? I mean, where would you take that? I mean, that you're right. I mean, this movie overcomplicates it. You really just need it can be just another family in the same town. Okay, but I mean, at some point you run the risk of remaking the movie. Right? Yeah. Because this is going to be, we got, I mean, the whole gist of that movie is, uh, I mean, eventually there's a, and sorry if you haven't seen Pet Cemetery, we're going to spoil it. <laughs> Uh, Any of them. The gist is that there's a town in Maine that has hidden in the woods. There's an ancient Micmac Indian burial ground that is cursed and, or is possessed by an evil spirit. And when you bury people there or people, anything, and bury a living thing there, it comes back to life, right? Yeah, like a cat or a bull, as you discussed. A what? A, a bull. bull. That's the that's the sequel movie. Is you the man who loved his bull about the guy who buried his pet bull? Yeah, <laughs> he dragged his fucking bull all the way that, up there. That's like a big detour in the book. They talk about that story a lot. That's because it took him too long to get up there. Because <laughs> it's like over the hills and far away, right through the bram through the woods, the deadfall, to the grandmother's, grandmother's house. We go. We go. Yeah. yeah, got it. It's out there. When well, they talk the about how, like, when the bull comes back, it's basically like running down the streets of Ludlow, just like terrorizing the town. <laughs> nice. That's how you make the stakes bigger. Well, so, just, like, is that what you do? I mean, so he's the bull then. Um, Clancy Brown's the bull. Basically, I guess. <laughs> well, this is the thing, I guess, that maybe the first movie, the first movie, you know, kind of works its way and it's always revealing something, which is what I kind of like about it. You know, you go into that movie not knowing what's going on. It's like there's a pet cemetery where kids bury their pets. OK, but behind that one, there's the other one. Uh, the little girl's um, cat gets hit. And so then it becomes like, well, the kindly neighborhood guy who knows the secret of this hidden place that I don't think a lot of the locals know about, right? Is that what the impression you got off the first one? Judd knows about it. Not well known. I mean, known enough for people that have collected a a fair few uh, specimens over the years in the cemetery, but it doesn't seem like, you know, well, not the the cemetery, the the, the burial ground. Yeah. Uh, In that movie though, we don't really see many other people. That's the thing. We really only see Judd and the creeds and like a few people. (laughs) College, but that's it. Yeah. So it's like uh, 
So we don't camera. really know because we don't see anyone else. Mm-hmm. So your camera tilts to the left a little bit and you see the whole line of people who are backed up to bury their pets. <laughs> <laughs> Terry. Hey, so no that. cutsies. <laughs> well, here's, hey, here's what I got. Off, back there. <laughs> off of the first one, I got the, because I think like, I don't know, I like the first movie, so I remember little bits and pieces of it that are, you know, but uh, Judd says that he heard about the place from the Raggedy Man, right? Which is uh, he, some old town drunk or something who tells him and possibly of Indian yeah. descent who tells him about the place right and about the power so it's like judd has this special knowledge that it's there it's like it's not well known and what it does he took his uh you know dog up there and the dog came back and then eventually the dog died of old age um somebody did take a person up there once in like the 40s or the 50s and uh he came back and was evil, and they had to like kill him and burn Timmy Baderman, right? They had to mm-hmm. kill him. And- yeah, they they burned down his house with him in it. So in the book, it's it's like this urban legend that everyone like wants to forget and kind of chooses to ignore. But the town does know about it. You're saying they do, but Other they like Joe. all just kind of pretend like it it isn't a real thing. Like a Timmy Baderman situation happens once every like 10 to 15 years in the book. And they, after that incident is over, they all just try to pretend like it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if we're talking (laughs) escalation, it's like the whole idea in the book or not the book, sorry, the movie and the book, I think is that there's this evil spirit that lives there. It wants to possess people and come back. And when they come back, if it has a person, It comes back evil and it wants to basically kill everybody else because it wants to have souls or whatever to kill it. It's just, it's a killing thing, right? It's this evil. I think it wants more vessels to bring back more dudes. Yeah. And I think that's why they always take the pets there because pets are less intelligent creatures. And so there's not really that threat that the pets are going to kill you, but a a person, right, is going to come back as this evil force. And, yeah. of course, you know, the guy ends up burying his uh, family members up there. And so that's the end of the movie. It's like, boom, this is shocking. Uh, you know, a person comes back. Um, so then you're left now with, we, like, what, yeah. what are you going to do with the sequel? Um, they left one uh, character alive, uh, Ellie yeah. Creed. Do you, do you could have gone with her? her? Well, I, Rachel walks back in at the end, like, undead. Yeah, what happens after that? You know, it's like, I don't know. These are all sorts of, uh, the, the, the mind begs the question of, like, what happens after this? this? movie doesn't care, but it's annoying because they walk right past that house. Yeah. yeah. You can't acknowledge it like that and not explain what happened. Yeah. Ooh, it would have been cool if they did do a movie about Ellie. And there's always the question of her mother. And then, like, during the big third act reveal, like, her mother is still dead and around and comes back and shit. That'd be cool. Something, like something more related to the creeds. I think if they're, you know, yeah. if it's a, it's especially, you know, the, f- the story's focused on them. But we're gonna go. Nope, sequel. Get rid of the whole the creeds. This is just gonna be another story where somebody else gets buried in the pet cemetery and comes back. So now we got to come up with who's coming back and why they're coming back. Yeah. And so this movie and comes up with the whole. Well, what's the intro again? Yeah. What do we got here? What's what's the uh, what's the setup of this? Well, the setup is, um, uh, well, Edward, uh, first of all, let's go through who's starring in this movie. We have Edward Furlong. Hot uh, off of Terminator hot, 2. Hot off of Terminator 2. Very successful young man. We've got uh, Anthony Edwards. Pre-ER, but post-Top Gun. Yes. You can tell by the hair. That's how you judge <laughs> Anthony Edwards' career and where he's at, by how much hair he's got left. Um, and then uh, we've got Clancy Brown as the sheriff, kind of the asshole sheriff of the movie um we start the movie uh uh much like um just like we do with stephen king shit even though this is not technically stephen king uh we started on a fake movie set uh in the middle of a movie and it turns out that edward Furlong's mom is an actress and she's on set and uh an accident befalls her which kind of sets everything off a hilarious accident in my opinion it wow 
wow, way did it go on like way too long? Yeah, like, that's she was why it was so funny for a long yeah. time. And I, her acting while she was being electrocuted was pretty bad, so that's was, what made yeah. it even funnier. It was very much like Daniel Stern in Home Alone too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and it's yeah, very, and it's very got- over the top. Where like all the electrical appliances are exploding and people are running around screaming as this poor woman's being electrocuted. While she's being electrocuted, she's ah! which I don't exactly. think actually happens. If you get electrocuted, I pretty much everything tenses up and you you die. I've been electrocuted. You don't make a sound. Yeah, like that. That's not how that happens. You want to see a good one? You see a movie called The Believers, which also starts off with a similar scene, more realistic, domestic. But uh, yeah, that was uh, shocking and horrifying. This one is like cranked up to eleven, and. Uh-huh. Uh, but I mean, this basically does set up the thing. Uh, you got the relationship between the kid and his mom. He wants her to come back. So eventually, uh, that means she's going to have to get buried in the pet cemetery. And so we got to then, uh, our plot has to be basically explaining to us what the pet cemetery is, how they get, how he gets her to it. Right. And so thus yeah. begins Loosely. the movie. <laughs> Yeah, and they got to restart everything and explain to us again um, yeah, how we kind of like we kind of take a detour. We take a pretty long detour before we get there <laughs> with the bowl, Clancy Brown. But didn't this? I mean, but didn't that kind of feel like? I mean, that was it. Really did. I guess so, Holly. What you're saying is the way that I perceived the movie. That the movie had a very a small story, right? Which is basically, I mean, that's it. What we just described. Uh, but in order to get there, we have to that introduce other characters. This movie has a couple stories. Yeah, which Edward Furlong really isn't together. a part of. Yeah, yeah. What what is the point of Edward Furlong and his family even being in this movie? Like it it matters in like the cold open and like the end of the third act, but the yeah. rest of the movie it doesn't fucking matter at all. Yeah, it's really fucking weird. This movie is weird. Weird. This was very weird. Like well, that's off the charts that weird. Like, that was a weird movie. Yeah, but um, not scary. I don't no. know what they thought. If they thought it was, I mean, Bloody. it's very gross. Yeah, there's a lot of pus, bodily fluids, blood, things drills, skinned. Uh, yep. Yeah, wounds. Yeah, so I mean, it's a it's much gorier than the first one. It's yeah, it's just so weird. It's like a polar opposite. It's like it's like she was. It's like she was like, all right, in the first movie I went with I went with fear, I went with dread, I went with emotions, I went with all these things. Let's do the opposite in the next one. But I've been watching a lot of MTV lately. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like I need to bring that to this movie. Yeah, basically. Well, the first one's a tragedy. I suppose that's why, yeah. you know, it's kind of it's it, the, an air of palpable melancholy hangs over that entire first movie. And I think that's part of why you want to go see the next one in this series, you know, because like that was, you know, that was a pretty. <laughs> you know, that was horrible. Let's watch something just like it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and with the first movie, like the things that happen to the family are just like relatable everyday accidents. And that's what makes it so tragic is like it, I could deal with something like that or that could happen to my family. Yeah. Like they're just normal people accidents. Whereas this movie, it's like nothing like this happens to any real people in this fucking movie. Well, I think it's a Over problem right away by making the mom and act a Hollywood actress. Cause right there it's like, well, I mean, my mom's not a Hollywood actress. I don't know any Hollywood actress, you know, like already yeah. it's like, okay. So I don't know what the, the lifestyle run, what is matter? of these people. Yeah, her yeah, that, doesn't mean anything. Yeah, I was thinking that like halfway through the movie, I was like, okay, I, what was the point of the beginning? But also, what was the point of her being an actress? Like, it, I don't understand their logic behind it at all. Yeah, her fame or anything really doesn't play into the 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 plot of the movie, really. Except kids going like, hey, you know, I know I've seen your mom. So what happens is, so she, mom and dad were separated, and uh, <laughs> I've seen your mom. Can I also bring up real quick the uh, the on the wall memorial that this school put up for this random actress? Did anybody else see this? Well, like no, the Red Book magazine cover pasted to a wall. It's like, oh, yeah, but wasn't her. that after they moved back and she went to that school? I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, oh, she, she was at high school. Yeah, yeah, that Is was she? like, yeah, okay, like I hope they so. had an alum that passed away. Because otherwise, I'm like, what's what what school does this? 
for someone for a celebrity who dies. Well, I like the way that you're saying that this is not clear to us in the movie. <laughs> like, uh, yes, yeah, they move uh, they move back to Ludlow, Maine, which is where the first movie took place. We're reminded of this because the Creed family legend uh, has seeped through the entire town. The entire town seems to know about a that there's a Micmac burial ground that uh, the Creeds, you know, whatever there was a, a zombie in the family and the Creed murders. Everybody knows all this stuff. Yeah. Which I say, I don't know how. And, you know, who knows what, what came after this? We find out that uh, Ellie Creed grew up, murdered her grandparents, went to an insane asylum or something like that. Um, and then maybe wrote a book. Yeah. From the, from the not how, I mean, why not? Yeah. Which this is based on probably. Um, so Anthony Edwards and, and, and the actress were divorced. Uh, so they, but they end up moving back to her hometown. I think it's there. It's his hometown too. They met, right? Yeah. Uh, sometime back there because we're introduced to the sheriff. This is Clancy Brown and he used to date, uh, the mom. So we're, yeah. we're setting up some kind of dynamic where, uh, you know, the, these two guys are don't are at each other's throats. Um, <laughs> setting up it's, <laughs> You, the way you say it implies there's some like delicacy to doing that. Not this movie though, because no, he basically there's... just steps in front of Edward Furlong and be like, "Hey, fucked your mom once." <laughs> yeah, there's about a. That's there, basically there, what yeah. he does. There's a 20 second awkward moment, and that's it. Well, let's talk about Clancy Brown in this movie <laughs> because he's basically, uh, if you've seen this movie, you are going to remember Clancy Brown. And his performance in this movie for the rest of your life. You may not remember the details of anything else, but right. you're going to remember him. But you know, it was fucking weird. Yeah. Well, he's so he's the sheriff, but he's also the stepdad of uh, this kid that Furlong ends up uh, befriending at school. He's his only friend. They're the, basically the misfit out, outcasts. Um, but Clancy Brown is just a Dick. despicable. <laughs> awful human being in this movie yep um yes. what's his uh what's his offenses what do you got here um well he's he's a creep for one he, he's uh, a bunny rubber <laughs> <laughs> a, he's a damn a what? dirty bunny a what? rubber a what? What he is. A damn dirty bunny rubber <laughs> an aggressive bunny rubber is, if I could say that, yeah, he's got he's got a pen out in front of his house that he keeps rabbits in that apparently he sells, but he likes them maybe a bit too much. He's watching them fuck while he's stroking another one. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's like how we're introduced to him, right? It's real creepy. Well, he seemed like he was okay at the funeral, right? He keeps all the paparazzi back or trying to take pictures of the casket going in the ground. <laughs> you know, yeah. like ugh, unsavory. <laughs> Um, Photojournalism. Well, he's Ghouls. he's also. <laughs> I mean, he's got you know. Uh, he's rough with the kid. You know, he's just a kind of addicted to him with all of his uh, rules and all that other stuff. He's you know yeah. throwing yeah. his Very weight strict. around all over the place. He ends up shooting the fucking kid's dog. Um, you know, yeah. just to be an he's, asshole. I warned that he's kid. Awful. He's really gross. Like he like fondles the kid's mom in front of him. Like it's, he's just disgusting. He's just the worst stepdad of all time. I don't like blame a, him for that, but, but and this is in like in front a, of the kid. Well, the kid wasn't there when when the fondling started. That was a husband and wife moment that the kid. But he didn't in. stop when the kid he walked did. in. No, he did not. That's true. Um, the uh, yeah, it's just like to me, and I don't know you guys how you took this. It's like he's a cartoonish um, bad guy. I mean, he's just like mm -hmm. so over the top. This character, yeah. right? It's like usually don't you have to like kind of even these people out with some kind of humanity to make them at least believable. I mean, you can still have them be bad, uh, even mm -hmm. evil. But like this guy is, you know, <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, no yeah. redeeming qualities. It's like the mom found the last dude in town. who's like, all right, I guess I'll pay him. Yeah. yeah if you're going to if you're going to show us like him, like watching rabbits fuck for fun, you need to balance that out with like. He can be really charming when he needs to, to the right people, you know? Yeah. But he's not. He's just an no. asshole to everybody. Yeah. So it's like, okay. Right. It's like, he, when he's not slapping me, he, he treats me real good. Let me ask you like, this. Oh. I feel like the reasoning behind that is later on when he's, you know, the undead or whatever, that for like the first few hours or whatever that they're with him, 
they're under the impression that, hey, maybe this was a good thing because he kind of seems like he's better now. You know, he was like, he was actually nice to me. He's actually, you know, and, and just, it doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. No, it, not at all. No. But I think but that was like, is what, meant, yeah, yeah. I think that's what they wanted to do, but it does not work at all. No, they really want you because the kids are just like his stepson is like, I, it made us feel like we were a real family. <laughs> it's like this has this kid has an altered sense of what family <laughs> to say the least. It's just like he was so good to me. Yeah, he only put out two cigarettes on me. Well, because he becomes, uh, you know, I mean, I'm saying he's over the top as the as the normal guy, but once he becomes, he becomes the centerpiece zombie creature of the uh, the this movie because the first one's set up, you're right. You can bring people back from the dead. The second one, the new thing that we're going to do is we're going to have a dead person be like a main character in the movie. So we're going to bring him back like halfway through the movie. We're going to kill him, put it, bury him in the cemetery. He's going to come back. And then he's like this clownish buffoon of evil or buffoonish clown of evil. Do you, right? do you think, do you think that, do you think that they were wondering if, because the first movie is so heavy that they were like, Hey, maybe we should make the second like lighter and make it more comedic. Well, that's what I wondered. Do you think it was un- intentionally? I think it was campier, or I do. I think it was goofy. I mean, he's I, like wise cracking in the third act. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. yeah, they're like, let's. I think for this one, they're like, let's make a funner horror movie. What yeah, they like thought when, would be a funner horror movie. Like when but he kills, when, like when he kills the bully, and he's you know he, when he kills him and he gets blood splatter, he's like, whoops! Like it's just. Yeah, very, he might as well be yelling yeah. puns. Yeah. And I wonder if that's something to sidestep like a ratings board thing. It's like, well, it's not serious. You can't take this serious, right? We don't want it to be too grim. This movie feels grim, though. Even but it's with weird the- to ratchet up the gore so much and then, like, try to balance it out with more humor, you know? That, an interesting choice. That works in certain scenarios, but it they didn't. Peter Jackson the, movies. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that was exactly what I was thinking. Like, if you watch <laughs> Dead Alive, it's fucking hilarious and yeah. disgusting. Yeah, those movies don't feel yeah. like they they're on Valium like this movie does. Yeah, like, it felt like it was just, on Valium. I well, thought this was all high, just, hopped up on something. It felt hopped up. Well, I don't know because it's just it feels very like hitchy. <laughs> Gr- grungy and just kind of like Murr. yeah like those kids sitting in the dam just throwing a rock looking like fucking sour poses that's just that's kind of like the image of this movie just like you know, mm. part of it is sean is like the first movie was all like green and blue and had fog everywhere and this movie is just like that shit brown at like the end of november when like all the trees are dead and like it's just shit <laughs> everything's brown. muddy yeah. yeah, it's mud. Yeah, this movie has like no color or personality the way the first one did. True, it's just very earthy and blah. Mm-hmm. It's it's like a grunge video. Mm-hmm. It really is. I'm feeling yeah. like uh, like when Nirvana's gonna come in here and just start <laughs> jamming at some point. Yeah, well, with their music choices, I was like, mm, they could have gone with something like Nirvana, and it might have been better. This movie is so. packed wall to wall. Well, in the end of the credits, we're told there were ten. Uh, pop songs or pop rock songs on the soundtrack, which this movie just fucking hits you over the goddamn <laughs> head which with. Which they played at length. Yeah, because this is in back movie. in the, I think like this, in this era of the 1990s there was the whole idea that you could have a soundtrack album, right? You know, because it's one of those things where even when you're playing songs during the credits, credits back then were like three minutes long. That's a song length. We got to pack like two or three songs into the end credits because we're basically just sampling them for you. So you'll rush out and buy the soundtrack. The, yes. the, the music, the songs are used as score inappropriately over a lot of scenes where it's like, uh, yeah. you're just playing a song. This doesn't capture a mood at all. Right. It, just, it, it doesn't, it doesn't fit with it at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're like, this song captures every mood. <laughs> Except for Shitlist by L7. That totally that was skinning good. the cats. I, I like that song. Yeah. And the Ramones do come back. They did, you know, the Pet Cemetery, Pet Cemetery song from the first movie. They do a song over the end credits, or at least part of them. That sounds almost exactly like Pet Cemetery. I yeah. thought it was at first. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Until I got to the chorus, and then it said, I don't want to be. And I was like, oh no. And then it was a different line. It's almost <laughs> the exact same. <laughs> it's like the difference between. Unforgiven and Unforgiven too. Yeah. <laughs> Who did the uh, Pet Cemetery remake song? Do you remember? 
Uh, I don't know. It was, it was a really female. Cover. It, was a, it was a cover punk band, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was one of those slowed down covers. That I don't know. Up so Again, much. as soon as that movie was over, I was out, so I didn't <laughs> stick around for the credits. Well, I mean, the dynamic. Okay, so here's another question. It's like, who's the most likable character in this movie? Zowie the dog. <laughs> but he's a demon dog. Yeah, that's demon fine. dog. Doesn't matter. Even right. so, but like everyone in this town sucks more, ass, Colin. So he might as well kill else. them all. Yeah, this is this is like the Midwest asshole or something like that. It's just mm-hmm. it's not a nice place. Is it everyone because, sucks. Well, I mean, Maine's asshole. We, we've cast Edward Furlong, uh, and again, you know, I mean, he's not uh, at this point in time. I think the, you know his charisma that he had out of Terminator Two was probably a lot of. I mean, James Cameron's a very um, you know. Uh, he has ideas, right? <laughs> Where he wants his performances yes. to go and all that stuff. This seems like it, you know, it was a little more hands off. So then it's like, you know, you're casting the kid because he became like probably a pinup, you know, model or something for, you know, whatever, 17 magazine or I whatever was the hell. Say, was yeah, he was in Tiger there. Beat. Tiger Beat. There you go. He and, was. Um, but he, he wasn't an actor. He was like plucked off the street, I think, uh, for say. Terminator 2, right? The casting was, agent found him on a street corner or some shit and said, you're John Connor. I was always really excited when I would get my like 16 or teen bop or whatever magazine. And I'd get my like centerfold poster. And you never want it to be someone you like on the back. Yeah. It was one of, and when it was outward for long, I'd be like, yes, I can oh, so put you it had on my one. wall. <laughs> for long on the well, wall. No, 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 no. I liked when he was on the back of it. Mm. So she didn't have to, yeah. So, I, so yeah. it wasn't a waste. You didn't have I, to make Sophie's choice. Yeah, I didn't want to cover someone yeah. I liked. So when it was Edward Furlong, I was like, score. Holly, did you cover like get shit. like a mechanical pencil and carefully pry up the staples so it didn't rip the paper? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I've done that for posters. <laughs> uh, you have to. Say, the same Edward yeah. Furlong poster as it were. <laughs> because, because the tear would always be like down the middle of someone's face if you didn't or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it was probably like Jonathan Taylor Thomas that went up on my wall, most likely. And uh, Jonathan Brandis, probably. And Jonathan Brandis and Devin Sawa, of course. Mm-hmm. Well, Furlong oh, has Brad like He's oh, like, yeah. oh, yeah, Brad, Brad Redfro. Redfro. Actually, for, I, I thought about him. him while we were watching this movie. Yeah, it was like... Um, because he actually had some a bit of a career and, and I think was considered like a pretty good actor. Uh, Furlong, you know, what he did, um, he was in Night of the Demons, the remake. Uh, what, there was, seems like there was something. Was oh, in, Brain uh, Scan. Brain Scan. You remember Brain Scan? That was like he, the year after this. Was he in uh, Detroit Rock City? Yes, yes, he was. Yeah. Um, but he has a kind of a, see, here's the thing. He's a sullen kind of personality, right? So you've got a sullen teenager, you know, who's mopey over about the death of his mom because this is the nineties. Yeah. Um, so it's like, you don't really like him. There's really no personality to him. Right. So I guess he's a cipher for all 13 year old kids. And but, the thing, suck. but the problem is that you're supposed to at least feel sorry for him. And I don't. Yeah. 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 I think that's a thing. I, I think yeah. I was going to say his friend was maybe uh, Drew, his friend Drew, because it's Jeff and Drew. I thought uh, Drew was probably the one who came off the best of the cast of like maybe most sympathetic, only because his yeah. dog gets shot and, you know, he's bullied by his dad. Um, I hope for that kid, yeah. But, um, and he becomes basically the, the main character of like the middle part of the movie, all right? It's about him. Mm. He's moving yeah. the story along. He has heard about the pet cemetery. His mm. dog gets killed. He's like, let's take the dog up there and bury it. Brings dog back. He's the one, you know, who's driving the plot with the things that he's doing. And Furlong's just kind of like along for the ride. And we're like, this is your movie, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Waiting yeah, for that a, story to engage again <laughs> in the last yeah, 10 minutes. Yeah, the movie's called Pet Cemetery, and Ed for, Edward Furlong has, like, nothing to do with the Pet Cemetery until, like, the third act. Yeah. Only, only thing he just gets- like the way this kid looks on a bike. I swear to God. <laughs> Terminator and this. They're just like, we just need you on the bike. That's all you're doing for this scene. Go. Yeah, because the only thing he's getting out of the movie, basically, is uh, the rules, right? You can bring dead things to life. Uh, you have to bury what's yours, this kind of stuff. Oh, the way it's explained in this movie is terrible, too. Did you like, think... Oh. The bully kind of screams half of them at him when, he, when they take his kitten. And I was like, oh, that's how we're going to do it. The bully's going to, like, give him the talk of the town. That's kind of... Yeah, stupid. the bully. The bully is the exposition dump. Twice. The bully, do you remember him from Big? 
He was Tom Hanks' yeah. friend in Big, or the yeah. kids' yeah. version. Yeah. Honey, I Shrunk the was, Kids. He, Only now yes. he's got He was. That's what I was trying yes. to think of him being from. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Yeah. He's the asshole right. who just hates Edward Furlong because he's a new kid or something. I mean, I guess that's all the because psychological. Because he's wearing a leather jacket, Colin. That's why. Because Furlong was? Oh, yeah. So he's got to torment him all the time. He always calls him uh, Junior. What does he call him? Yeah. Junior? That's, weird. Hey, That's junior. weird. This kid's bullying tactics honestly don't make any sense. He's a bad bully. Yes, he's a real bad bully. <laughs> hey, Junior, you want to come over for dinner sometime? <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. Edward Furlong's a fucking idiot for taking a kitten to school in his coat in the first place. What you a know? dumbass. So, Jesus. Yeah. Who but the that's fuck what, does that? But that's also like, kids are fucking dumb, and they do that. Like, but wait, how old is Edward Furlong supposed to be? He's a teenager, right? I think he's 13. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's not like he's six years old. He should right. know better. He like should. You're, he's taking you're his little buddy high, to school with him. Like you're in high school. You should know that that's not a good way to make friends, to be the weirdo with a cat in his jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also just not great for the cat. Yeah, thanks for telling me now, Holly. <laughs> well, his like, dad... That cat's definitely shitting in his coat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? All day long, and I'm sure, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. His dad is a veterinarian. You smell Edward, like cat Edward. piss now. You're the smelly cat piss. Now they're going to call you cat piss. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just ruined your life on the first This is a I missed opportunity. Buddy. They should have done that at some point. Well, Anthony that, Edwards. That, been, that, that nickname would have made more sense if he had called him cat piss. What yeah. Up, right up, what up, cat piss? Yeah. <laughs> it would have been a good nickname for this movie. Yes. They apparently didn't think that far ahead. But he has yeah. the cat. Yes. He has the they cat didn't because. not think about much in this movie. Oh, well, yeah. He has the cat because his dad is a veterinarian, right? He's apparently a big Hollywood veterinarian who moves back, right, and has to take over a, a dilapidated veterinary office. And of a course, big Hollywood veterinarian, right? A big Hollywood veterinarian. Is he in charge? Is he like looking after our animals for our documentary? But this is <laughs> yeah, probably. Is that is what he you got, got Jonesy, out of it? the scorpion? Because I was like, why doesn't he just live in Maine and she dies and the kid lives with her? And so she, he's got, you know, the kid has to come back to Maine where the dad lives. Wouldn't yeah. that be what easier is, than they yeah, have yeah. to move it put, back? It would and, also put a, a little wrinkle in their relationship if he keeps talking about this and then suddenly like he really wants his mom back. Wow. A more interesting uh, story. Yeah. Yeah. Just right there. I mean, bam. well, th- I mean, they had to have a reason to bring her body back to Maine. Well, you could still do that because yeah. yeah, it's her hometown. True. She comes back, you know, can still do that. Yeah. But at least he'd be set up and, you know, there'd be like probably a relationship that he's having that would be cause, you know, problems for Edward for a long, you know, um, yeah. but no, it's all like, Hey, we just moved back to this town. We got to set up this, uh, uh, veterinarian service. Um, so th- and the random housekeeper, like, which is a lot like the random laundry lady in the original, I guess. Is this just yeah. a thing you do in Maine? You have housekeepers yeah. and laundry ladies? They're yeah. just your neighbors that decide they're going to help you? I don't know. I rich, folks, rich folks in Maine, let us know. Veterinarians must yeah. make a lot more money than uh, I thought. I mean, they have movers and uh, a housekeeper who basically, it seems like, lives there. Is there something going on with her and the dad? It, I mean, it seems, seems like it. It seems like they want us to think there is. I don't know. It's very... I don't understand any of the point of the housekeeper other than like the weird obsession at the end. Like, well, see, that's what I think like they could have done, which would have been more interesting. Like she applies for the housekeeper job just cause she was obsessed with the actress. So she can like get into her things and all that stuff. It kind of sounds like that was it kind of the feels intent, like, right. but it didn't really play out. No, like they're, I w- they're, they got stuck in the middle of being a love interest and going that way. That would have made a more interesting story if there had been more about the crazy housekeeper like trying to become the mom. Yeah, because she's like a dead yeah. ringer for her too. I think. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean she's she looks very similar to her. Yeah. Um, but again, this is unexplored by this movie because this movie wants to give you shock and awe all the time. With uh, we got uh, well, I mean, I guess it begins in earnest once. Well, I mean, the dog comes back and. You know, it kills cats and it's basically being a menace, but it uh, it's got red eyes. It's a demon dog, but it kills Clancy Brown when Can- Clancy Brown comes out to the graveyard where the bullies and everybody's hanging out and they're torturing Edward Furlong by uh, with a, well, not a marionette, but a dummy of his mom and embarrass him. He's screaming as his dummy attacks him. He's like, mom, 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 freaking out. That's weird. 
But uh, yeah, elaborate, <laughs> elaborate. Because why do they have it in for this? Ca- I just don't get it. It's like they were so fervently devoted to his destruction. And it's like, what did the fucking kid do? This is just a hobby, I guess. Bullies, yeah. right? This is what I guess they there's do. nothing to do in Maine. Yeah. Um. So the dog kills Clancy Brown, rips his throat out. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. Actually, before we get there, I'm kind of curious, uh, you fans of the first movie. Um, did you get the impression that, because I think this is like a twist on the mythology. Well, there's two things that this movie kind of twists the mythology, but one uh, is the idea that a demon possesses the the person, right? So they are basically this demon thing walking around, not, you know, Clancy Brown doesn't see, he seems to be like, yeah, like the old Indians didn't. He has a knowledge that uh, it doesn't seem like he's the thing that lives in the in the pet cemetery. Yeah, the Micmac burial ground, you know what I mean? Right. That's number one, where they missed it, they fucked it up. Number two, um, they take the dog to the vet, vet draws the blood, and it turns out they send it off to the, you know, it's like, this is dead animal blood. Did you get the impression in the first one that, like, when the things came back, their hearts weren't beating? They were, like, dead corpses walking around, zombies? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. especially because their, like, injuries don't heal or anything. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I feel like they would eventually just start falling apart, decay from not getting any blood to them and all that. But we know that doesn't happen because Judd's dog dies of old age this is when he comes back the second time. Church would have been fine as a cat and lived, uh, you know, and died again. That's that. I, I don't, I'm obsessing about like weird <laughs> <I'm laughs> technical about details. Victor Pascal, you know. Well, he's a he's he's just a a, a, a phantom. Ghost. Yeah. 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 But Gage But even the comes ghost has all of his alive. injuries. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, they uh, the dog kills um, uh, Gus, the the trooper, and so they bury him in the pet cemetery. Of course, to cover up because they're kids. What are they going to do? And so he comes back, and then begins like the reign of terror on the town. Um, there's a scene that stands out to me where this movie, I mean, it's over the top in a lot of ways. Uh, the twins that go into the uh, veterinary oh, clinic yeah. to uh, get a cat. And they go in the back. He's like, yeah, just go in the back there. They go back to the kennels and the cats are all torn up because the dog demon dog has escaped and killed them all. Sorry, Holly. Then we meet the, uh, what was the, this movie's jam packed with stuff. I hate Sean. All sorts of weird (laughs) shit. Like the guy, the old guy who the the the, previous veterinarian. Is that who it was? That's who it was. The okay. previous veterinarian. Because I thought they said oh, the previous okay. veterinarian was a she, but maybe I got that wrong. So he that was him. They went to see him. Yeah. <laughs> and for this, I apologize to Michaela. Yeah, this is, came out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> Holy shit. I was not expecting mm. this. What were you expecting? That, mm, that put me over the edge. The, uh, what, well, what did, Holly? Everyone in this fucking town has some morbid hobby. Like, no one can just be normal. And this guy's hobby is shitty taxidermy. And he's taxidermying, I don't know what the verb is. He's making <laughs> a pug into a taxidermy. And the hard cut is right to, like, a pug's taxidermied face where he's pulling the eyes out. Yeah. And Michaela and has the pug. And he licks the so. eye when he puts it <laughs> oh, in. Oh, well, you got to clean Pretty it great. <laughs> Pretty Not great. great. Not great. But then Pretty he's great. like yelling at the, you know, I mean, it's one of those scenes that, you know, <laughs> he's just like, the last time I saw one of these kind of, last time somebody brought a animal to, to me that had dead blood was the Creed cat. And you got to take your family and move, move, just get out now. You know, I mean, it's. Uh... <laughs> it's intense. Yeah, they, they do feel, I'll give them that. Uh, any of the little side characters do feel like Stephen King. King characters because no. you know all the Stephen King characters would have well just because they're just like you just meet someone who's got like a weird hobby and I disagree little, little off. Okay. <laughs> I feel like everyone in this movie is like someone from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre family yeah. they you know yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is not Stephen King in this is yeah because King at least makes all, things a little more backwards it feels his characters still feel somewhat relatable I guess and that's why it's like these people are aliens like every single are, are one of them of, are you thinking of King's character in Creepshow yeah that's what is that, is that like. what you're thinking of <laughs> you're saying when you Sean 
right? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. You think in a creep show, Jordy Verrill, mm, he's pitched no. and over the top. Yeah. Is... I was like, because that, yeah, he's, they're all like that, but. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, while this is happening, Clancy Brown is on the rampage, right? He's uh, having a dinner with his family, his wife who doesn't know that he's a zombie, even though I think the night that he comes home, he's going to take a shower, right? Because none of these fucking, they never wash the animals. They all have matted fur and the dirt that they were buried on. And Clancy Brown, likewise, doesn't change his fucking clothes. So he's dirty the whole way through the movie. But he comes home to take a shower, and his wife's like, honey, come to bed. And then we get zombie rape, which is like, what the fuck? Where are we going with this goddamn? <laughs> yeah, it's really uh, weird how they just kind of just jump to things. It's like, well, now we're going to do this. Yeah, now and they're just this. like these little scenes where it's like, and then some kind of extreme crazy thing happens. Just for shock value, it seems, you know? Yeah, speaking of shock value, they very much uh, cue that up when they have the weird dream sequences, which includes, like, dog-headed people. Oh, that was, right. <laughs> I forgot about that. That was because something else. So, well, Colin, going back to your point about, like, if they don't have blood or, like, a heart that pumps blood, then he can't get a boner to rape her. So this also does not add up. Right. And all these Boy. things would decay and, you know, drop. I mean, if your cells are not moving, then it's decay, right? Uh, well, and, like, what, what the kind of... Uh, in the original Pet Cemetery, our understanding of people coming back is that they basically just kind of kill anything that gets in their way, right? They have, like, some residual memories of who they were as a person, but that desire to kill kind of overrides all that. Yeah, That's they not the case bring, with Clancy Brown. They got to attract more things to the, the power in the woods, which feeds off of having yeah. them as a collective souls or whatever. But Clancy Brown has these stretches where he's able to, like, almost pass as normal. Yeah, apparently he goes to his wife's sense. funeral. Yeah. The wife and kid who he kills. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. They do mention that, don't they? Yeah, it's not you seen. see him at the funeral? That's weird. Yeah, because he's got a gaping wound, right, that he just has a bandage around. He walks around going, the whole way through the movie. The fucking scene at the dinner table. The funeral? Oh, he's just distraught. That's what's wrong with him. Sir. He's in He doesn't... He just doesn't seem that affected by being resurrected through the pet cemetery, you know? Right. He's pretty much the little girl from the remake. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, pretty much. The dinner scene grossed me out because there's a lot of uh, laughing with your mouth full of Oh my God. I'm not a fan of food being shown like that. First they show him slaughtering rabbits and then that bullshit with the food pouring out of his mouth. Yeah. As he's laughing at the and the kids are laughing with him and you're like, Ugh. what in the fuck? We have launched into nothing but trouble territory here. Yes. <laughs> oh God, you're right. Oh, that's why I hated it so much. It just needed a gray hot dog and it would have been right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, he he does uh, he does he kills the bully, which we were trying to figure out why because uh, the bully uh, tracks down Furlong on his bike and uh, you know it was like gonna kill him or something i mean like these bullies are hardcore he's like, i'm gonna take your nose off in the spinning wheel of your bicycle and then right. uh, then all of a sudden clancy brown shows up tells furlong to go home which i was wondering and you got to help me out did furlong bury clancy brown or did drew yes. okay so clancy brown bull uh, according to pet cemetery mythology belongs to edward furlong which explains why he's staring at him at dinner, why explain it, why he's coming around his house all the time. It doesn't make any sense. sense. No, it doesn't make sense, but I think so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But even still, like in the original, like it didn't matter who buried them because they still tried to kill everyone regardless. They didn't right. spare the person that buried them. Yeah. That's so how this works. It's not like, like you're not gonna sli- kill him, that- I'm gonna kill him. It's not like Sleepy Hollow that if you have the head, you have the power. Yeah, it's not like that. <laughs> yeah. Church still bit the fuck out of Lewis Creed all the time, even yeah. though he buried him. It didn't make a difference. Gage still tried to kill him. Like, that did not, that, oh, this movie, in the way it, like, doesn't even know its own mythology when it's the same director is so frustrating. Yeah, yeah but we got to blame really the writer. That, that speaks, that speaks to, well, I was going to say the writer, a lot of studio involvement. Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna say it might have been the writer, but you'd think with her as the director, she'd be like, "Whoa, whoa, this is not following any of the lore that we did in the first one." Or is she just here for a paycheck? I think she she's just here like, for, not even care. Yeah, There's this that. is an opportunity to come back, and you know, we're gonna hire you again. You worked for us before. Let's uh, let's knock another one out. We'll make easy money. It's Pet Cemetery too. 
Who cares sure. what it is? The kids will go see it. And they were right because I did. <laughs> did you see this in theaters, Yes, Colin? I did. Opening night. <laughs> Opening night. Wow. Yeah, it's Pet Cemetery too. You know, you didn't sure. know beforehand what it was. You know, <laughs> like, I like the. That's true. Back one. in the day, where you just went, you're just like, I don't know what it's going to be. Well, yeah. did they have a good trailer? Uh, not really, because I rewatched it again tonight <laughs> while I was waiting for Sean. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you're like, what is this? Uh, it's called Pet Cemetery too. Anyway, then Clancy Brown kills his family in this car chase down the road, right? Where we're yeah, basically ejecting that. our most likable character and his mom. Or I mean, the mom's at least sympathetic because she's like the wife who's got a long suffering wife who's got to put up with this fucking asshole. She's, I don't know. My sympathy for her was very slim because she was such a bad mom. Like, no, but she yeah. was helping the kid out. I'm letting no, you go. To she the was thing. not helping out the kid. Helping out the kid would have would be not having a toxic stepdad in the house. That would be helping out the kid. Yeah. Well, That's where all the problems are coming from. Yeah. Yeah. And we never understand why she's attracted to the guy or what she sees or like, you know, what the kid sees is not what she sees kind of thing. So she can't actually believe the kid. That's I mean, you the, could, that's, that's that's the unfortunate part of uh, abusive people is they're also charming to the people that they want to be charming to. In but real we don't even see that. Just, here. No, we yeah, don't. We don't here. see it at all. <laughs> we don't see it all. That's just general knowledge about shitty people. Yeah. That's not shown in this movie. No, this movie doesn't have the uh, the the artistry, the cleverness, or anything. Right. Yeah. To no. pull it off. Just yeah, like no, have, he's an asshole. We don't have development in this movie. Yeah. This movie is a blunt object. Um. So they die. They're killed by a bunch of potatoes. <laughs> I always remember oh. potato <laughs> foot. Or it's just just the blood coming down the potato foot. Yeah, I love that too because it's basically like the, he's chasing them down the road, and there's two cars next to each other, and he's rolling down the window and doing a because ah, he's doing basically the version <laughs> of the Kurgan. He was the Kurgan in a Highlander, I think, which is still right. the way I will always see Clancy Brown. So this is some version of that, but. Uh, as they're driving down the road, and then there's a truck coming on the road. There's no one else on this road. There's three cars. <laughs> Trucks coming, and for some reason, the truck can't swerve, can't put on the brakes, can't do anything. It just honks the horn. You know, oh, my God, we're going to hit it. And the truck, like, plows into their station wagon and destroys them. <laughs> and it's like, boom, okay, we just ejected our most likable characters and plot drivers from the movie. I guess that means we're going back to Edward Edgar, uh, Edward Furlong. This yeah, seems so. like oh, we had a big red semi truck hit someone in the first one, so we need to do that again. It did, yeah. I'd like to I like to think that they were fine after the head on collision, but the potatoes falling on them was the last straw. It's a potato. <laughs> and that's truck. really what killed them. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> killed by that a, would be the most wily coyote thing ever. <laughs> it, it really would be. The mom screams, "I hate potatoes!" and then dies. <laughs> well, we're. Uh, uh, and at some point, I guess uh, Clancy Brown's character also, after he kills the bully, right? Uh, he buries him up at the pet cemetery for. How does he kill the bully in there, Colin? Uh, well, he with the bike, right? He takes the 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 motorcycle and uh, the you know takes the the wheel, the spinning wheel, to his face and gets caught up in it, whatever, with his scarf, because that's why you don't oh, wear yeah, his, a fucking scarf. It's well, always their scarf. So he dies. Clancy Brown takes him up to the pet cemetery. That's right. You talked about the weird sex dream. Or did you say it was a sex dream with the dog face people? I mean, well, it Anthony is. Edwards was. Yeah. Yeah. That's how Anthony Edwards is still tethered to this movie, right? Because everybody's telling him, it's like, there's a, this animal's dead. I don't believe it. The creed, you know, animal was dead. You got to get out of town. I don't believe it. We got this Doggy idea from, dream. from Gage and, uh, um, what was the uh, Zelda? Right, that you know, basically, once you're dead, you get to somehow the thing projects uh, people from your past and you know alters reality and all that stuff. From the first movie, this one does it, where we we know that the dog, the demon possessed dog, has escaped from the the kennel and is prowling the town and it's getting in the house. Anthony Edwards is having a dream where his wife shows up and you know in bed with him. She's straddling him and saying, like, I can come back, you know, Anthony. And then he looks up, well, because there's a big close-up of her chest, right? Her breasts are exposed, and we tilt up, and she, it's like, this is... <laughs> Just, it's, like the, it's like the werewolf costume 
the dog last week was wearing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, this actress is wearing a wolf head, <laughs> and there's big shock stingers on the soundtrack, right. and he's... And know, there's... And there's no blending. It's not like the, the actress was turning into a wolf. It is just a wolf head. Just a, yeah, yeah wolf costume head. Yep. That they don't shoot or cover in any kind of way to make it believable at all. And it's like, oh my God, no. what is And happening? Anthony Edwards is not helping that scene at all with his face. But no. this means... Because that's what I laugh the most at. Yeah. <laughs> but this means, of course, that the dog is actually straddling him. And then we cut to and I'm like, is he fucking this dog? But he's dreaming that he's fucking his wife. And then it cuts back. And so like, many oh, questions. It's almost what was happening there. No matter what's no happening, answers. that's uncomfortable. Yeah. There's no good yeah, answer. You, yeah. No, you are too close to that dog. Well, no. And, and like, best case scenario, he was having, like, a sexy dream with the dog straddling him. Yeah, like best I think that's what was happening. Yeah, but that's still bestiality. Still yeah. gross. Yeah. Still gross. Um, yeah, so, best case scenario, you get eaten by a dog. Worst case scenario, you're fucking that dog. Yeah. It's not good. Yeah. It's a, uh, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, yes. after the, after the, our protagonists are, are killed, we move to um, Edward Furlong, who has apparently, in the space of a day or so, lost his fucking mind kind of like uh lewis creed in the first movie he's gone crazy yeah this is the jump that i was just like wait whoa did how I do we get here five middle movie. scenes yeah why are there five different middle scenes i haven't seen that led us to this where'd they go lead you to what what happens well he jumps to uh he has found some remnants of his uh all his mom's stuff got moved to the attic so he's up there kind of unboxing things and he's he's set up an area for his mother's return, his address on a on a, a body form in the corner. The bed's made. I mean, maybe some candles have been lit. Edward Furlong's in a suit. I, li- I like the uh, the vanity is set up with all of her like like pieces perfectly her placed, like and like perfumes, and her hand, like her mirrors, her combs, her jewelry is all like placed out. It's. Yeah, like she was like some 1940s starlet. It's right? ridiculous. Right. Like, no, big she had light, a makeup artist come vanity. in and do that shit. Although I will say I would have that vanity with all of that stuff if I could. <laughs> <laughs> well, the idea here is that Furlong's gone off the rails. And so he's like, I can bring mom back to life. We don't know what has actually tra- triggered this in him. Because everything's been horrible up until now. It's like, oh my god, you brought your dad back to life. This is terrible. And like, why would you subject your mom to this? He's just like so determined to bring his mom back. But the yeah, movie he, just he, jumps he has to, to it. snap. Yeah. yeah, but we don't see why he snaps. It's just like, okay, he snapped. He's he snapped. This, is, yeah. this is exactly why the better movie would have been this like crazy housekeeper moving in and trying to become his mom and trying to like take over. And she's nuts. And that eventually pushes him to be like, you know what? I'm going to bring my mom back and she's going to fix this. Like, that would have been the better movie. That would have been kick ass. This is like, that's like Friday the 13th Part 7 where Zombie Dad faces off against Zombie Jason. Yeah. I would have also. I don't feel like the movie really like plants enough of the seeds that he really wants to bring his mom back, though. Because this is not even about him. No, this is how you fix it. This is how you fix it. You you take away that whole opening scene. Basically, you still have mom being electrocuted or dying or something, but it's his fault. Inadvertently, it's his fault, and he feels guilty for killing her, and so that's why he's got to bring her back, right? See, he's got to make it right. (laughs) This is what the first one kind of did. It's like, you know, Lewis Creed is like, I got to bring this kid back because I was uh, neglectful. It's my fault that my kid is dead. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Colin, that's a great idea because have you guys seen a little movie called Garden State? No. Yeah. Y- yes, There's a actually, really yeah. emotional part of Garden State where Zach Braff talks about how he's responsible for his mom becoming paralyzed. Yeah. And that's like uh, Oscar. That's like an Oscar worthy monologue. Yeah. I think and, that's, that personal tragedy has yeah. to, you know, I mean, it's one thing if fate, you know, does it, uh, which is what happens here. Uh, but I think if you feel culpable somehow it's like that that makes it you know yeah he was on the yeah. damn set yeah. yeah also like there's not a motivation with the dad like there's the the talk where he was like do you think you and mom would have got back together and he's like yeah i think we probably would have it's like i need more than that i need like a more like a grieving man who's like desperate to have her back yeah. he's such a non-character what why yeah. is he even in this movie yeah uh yeah 
But they needed know. a vet. Because the idea you're going to have this nuclear family again, I guess, at the end, of that's what you're trying to, you know, bring back. You bring mom back. Uh, Clancy Brown digs her up, apparently, because Edward Furlong can't and buries her in the Pret Cemetery. But I was I got to tell you, I was disappointed when she shows up. She looks absolutely normal. Pristine. And I'm like, yeah, how yeah. long has she she's, been dead? She's clean and not rotting. Unlike every other person who comes out of the Pet Cemetery, it's just mom's yeah. back. It does not what's, fit. What's Clancy Brown's motivation for doing this? He's being ordered. Uh, like we said earlier, he's at Edward Furlong's. I think that's what's so going on. So he's taking on. orders. Yeah. I don't think Edward it Furlong. makes sense, but I think that is what the movie is saying is he is somehow, he belongs to Edward Furlong and does, you know, he protects Edward right. Furlong and he does, you know, this to help Edward Furlong because, oh, and he says that he brings her back because I want to fuck her. Just to make him even more, you know, disgusting. Right. So like antagonist. <laughs> Just, uh, two more points for his character, yeah. Yeah. As Ant- uh, Anthony Edwards have to, has to kill him, there's a scene with the drill, that, you know, in the in this room where uh, there's a... Uh, Clancy Brown's character has a bunch of fires going and dead rats all, or dead rabbits I all over like, the place. I felt like the, the bit with the drill was a nod to the uh, scalpel on the ankle in the, in the first one. Yeah, maybe, yeah. I think, that's like what they're, I think that's what they're going for. This whole movie is just a nod to the first movie. It's it's not it's not a continuation by any means. It's just tiny little nods to the first movie. Yep. Well, I would say that's absolutely 100% correct. It <laughs> would not exist without the first movie. Um, the uh, climax of the movie involves like a ton of characters showing up. Uh, the mom kills the housekeeper because she's trying to take her place. I think maybe, yeah. or she's just a uh, uh, you know. Uh, she then they bring back for some reason. I don't even know what the fuck he's doing. And the bully shows up, right, reanimated, and attacks Edward Furlong. It's like, why do you need? All of this you stuff. You don't, and it's and he's so inconsequential that I didn't even realize who it was. I was like, "Who the fuck is that? What are we doing now?" Yeah, he just comes yeah. back with he's all deformed, and he says, "You know, like, hey, Junior, blah blah blah." Fight him, and then uh, the movie ironically does have a happy ending. A change from the first movie is it a happy ending. I mean, I guess it ends. I don't. Know. Anthony Edwards and Edward Furlong both escape. We have to. They leave. Edward. I don't know if that's happy. Yeah. Yeah. They just leave and let mom burn because she set the house on fire. Uh, It's not. And then for some reason we have an in memoriam of the movie. Yeah. (laughs) The like soap opera like cameo photos of like even with the feathered edges and everything of the people who had died. They should have done a bit more feathering. Those were pretty (laughs) stark. Yeah, it's just weird. It's not like, because usually you would have like, uh, you know, so-and-so is played by or something like this, but this really is like, they feel serious. Yeah. We're somehow going to amp up the end of this movie. Like, look at the tragic, the, the lives that were lost. <laughs> well, yep. well, they should have showed each kitten one by one. Well, yeah. we've got the, uh, well, we've got the like overshot of the car driving through the main countryside. Yeah. Yeah, and over to the uh, pet cemetery. Unfortunately, this pet cemetery, the, the sorry, the Micmac burial ground does not look anywhere as good as the one in the first movie. This was recreated. Uh, I think they said they shot it in like Georgia or something. They did not shoot it in Maine. Uh, they had to shoot the first one in Maine because Stephen King said basically like you know we're doing it in Maine to bring money to Maine, you know, and do a production here. Uh, but the second one didn't have that luxury. They're like, we're going where it's cheap. They shot in Georgia, I think. I'm not positive, but it looks different. I mean, it, nothing looks like the first movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very strange, weird, unusual, and, uh, and not in a good way. I'm saying like, a, no. a, a, yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of this movie looked like Halloween decorations. It does yeah. take place during Halloween at one point. So Which, you, have that. you know, for, for I, us- split second, I yeah. usually appreciate that, but... <laughs> Yeah, I got my hopes up a little bit, and then I was just like, oh, all right, well, yeah, I guess no. that's all we're doing. Yeah. Well, Pet Cemetery 2, uh, <sighs> tell you what, listener, you haven't even heard. <laughs> right, everyone get it out now. Everyone get yourself. <sighs> we're, all, we're all tired of talking about that it. <laughs> was, that was an ordeal. But I am willing to bet that we haven't even got to the best part, because this is where we really get to tell you what we thought of this movie. We get to unleash. You get to unburden yourselves. Uh but first, we're going to answer some of your mail. 
And to do that, we're going to need the help of our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. I got nothing. No, I got nothing either. I think nope. we're all drained. I'm spent. <laughs> That's right. And we did this like twice before. So the Igor coming back and being all smelly and all that. Yeah, we did that. Uh, yeah, we did that joke. He's well, got a scarf around his neck this time, I guess. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you go, Igor. Wow. Wow, this is really this is a this is a moment for the Saturday Night Freak Show. Long time listener, Igor's like, you guys are bringing me down. <laughs> I just I didn't feel like forcing it, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can't force it, Colin. Some weeks we just mm-hmm. don't have it. This has never happened before. Uh, it so it's Pet Cemetery too. It's Thank you, yet. Sean. Twenty times. Uh, so we want to let you. Uh, if you want to join the Freak Show family, all you got to do you, you re- write into us, and we will read your stuff on the air. You can find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Giant Freak Show. And Twitter? At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And you can find us on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, unfortunately, tonight we are not putting Clancy Brown on the hall of uh, the Hallway of Fame. Aww. Or the Wall of Fame. He was in Nightmare on Elm Street, the remake, which I think was also a Sean pick. And he was in this, but that's, uh, that's a one more for Clancy Brown. Uh, Matthew Ola writes in and says, I just watched the remake to listen to your podcast. And now I'm all signed up for this. <laughs> That's, like I said, we're wound up on that one. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Jacob Laws says sometimes the original is better. You're damn yeah. right. He's You're doing the main right. accent there. At least Clancy Which, Brown. He was he, the Clancy only Brown character. Tried, yeah. He was the he only. Did it. He did a pretty good job. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody else was doing it. No. Even though it takes place in Maine. Um, CJ Lewis says, good God, I'm so ready for this one. My wife, for whatever reason, loves this movie. For me, it's a horror movie that it is not only so far off base from the original, but the poster child of early nineties horror movies that have a total lack of self-awareness on how comically goofy they are and sticking with the theme of horror movies starring child actors. Might I recommend the good son starring young Elijah Wood opposite oh, Macaulay yeah. Culkin. That's been on my list for a long time. Yeah. I've thought that about that Mr. one too. Mr. Highway. <laughs> I've thought about I that we, uh, yeah. I think we all dig um, the lost son from, I'm gonna guess. Yeah, because it's like a big budget lifetime movie. What's not to love about the good son? Uh, Travis Legler writes in and says, You're in store for a movie that Stephen King didn't want his name on. You're also in store for a fucked up zombie rapist, Edward Furlong, mostly looking bored. And I can hear Judd's voice now saying, Sometimes the original is better. It's hard to believe this is directed by Mary Lambert. She did an amazing job on the original movie. Yes. There you go. That's big that, agree. That's our wrap Indeed. Well, that's our reviews. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, we're done. We are done. Uh, Michael Whitaker writes in and he says, had it not been a Pet Cemetery sequel, it'd probably be a half-decent zombie movie. Full confession, by happenstance, I did watch this movie before the original Pet Cemetery, so I might be remembering it fonder than it actually is because it got to me first. Sometimes nostalgia does that. Yeah, yeah that. it does. Nostalgia clouds your brain. Simon Carter says, I watched this when I was maybe 14 years old. All I remember is boobs and a fucking dog head that I was not expecting. It th- It threw me totally out of the moment. That's, so, that's, uh, it's going to be hard to forget scene. it. I, yeah, I, that's I feel like that's a, for, that's, a remem- that's a memorable moment for anyone. Not 14, just anyone. But strangely, yeah, I've seen forever. this movie before, and I didn't remember that moment. <laughs> I do not remember that. No, no. I remember Clancy Brown. That's like all I took away from this movie. Yeah. Um, Teresa Ann says, this is my guilty pleasure. It's still superior to the 2019 god-awful remake of Pet Cemetery." That's a good question. All right. Is it Stay better? better. Bottom, Stay man. tuned. Is it better? Uh, Carson Snar says you're in for a bizarre sequel that somehow has the name or has the same director as the first one. There you go. Uh, two weeks ago, we watched a movie called Phantoms. Stephen Haynes writes in and says Peter O'Toole was the bomb in Phantoms 2. In all seriousness, though, he lent an air of credibility to the movie that wouldn't have been there if he was absent. <laughs> 
Colin, if anyone else has a comment about who or who may not have been the bomb in a certain movie we watched, you could skip them now. No, no. I had to sit through how many fucking Chuck Norris jokes? No. <laughs> You're going to read every goddamn de bomb comment we get. Well, all right. Well, Did I just want to... Chuck re- Norris was the bomb enchanter. I want to remind people that, yes, Peter O'Toole was Lawrence of Arabia, but he was also in Caligula. So, I he mean, was. how much he was yeah, credibility... I totally forgot that when we were talking about that. I'm like, oh, Jesus, he was in that hardcore Roman porno movie, Caligula. Uh, Teresa Ann wrote in again. She says, uh, the part with the dog in uh, in Phantoms was especially unintentionally hilarious. It's just a dog in reality, and Affleck t- completely sold it as being an alien. I agree. It was pretty funny. Yep. Yeah, I like it. Totally sold it. <laughs> well, Novato Judoka says, I believe Reginald Val Johnson's short arc in Die Hard more than Ben Affleck's in this movie, Phantoms. Because they okay. both shot a kid as yeah, a they did. law enforcement officer and have to live with it for the rest of their lives. Well, here we go. We're going to let you know. Really, Michaela. From the bottom of our hearts, what we thought of <laughs> Pet Cemetery. Sean can't wait anymore, huh? Jump Quiet, right Colin. In. We gotta get, we gotta get this over with. <laughs> Michaela, what did you think of Pet Cemetery Two? You know, I was hoping well. going into this, I knew it wasn't going to be good. I knew I wasn't going to love it more than the original, but I was hoping at least it'd be awesomely bad and it'd be like entertaining in that sense. Yeah. And it wasn't. It, it it's. I don't want to say it's overstuffed because that would like imply that things are complete. And, like, I don't think there are complete arcs in this movie. I think there's, like, random bits and pieces. Yeah. And it, it it's so overly, like, convoluted in its setup and in its way of getting back to Maine in a way that it doesn't need to be. This could just be about another family in the same town. And you just escalate it in what's being buried. Or, like, Colin, your idea of, like, the sense of responsibility for someone else's death and the guilt, like... That's kind of a hallmark of this universe. So, yeah. you know, I, I think the idea to take something that's so tragic and melancholy and like try to make it like zany and goofy is probably not a great way to go. Um, I mean, that's why we have Sleepwalkers. If we want to watch like a zany Stephen King movie, we'll go watch Sleepwalkers, you know? Um, it's Edward Furlong. I just don't get it. I've never gotten it with him. I don't know why he has a career. I don't know why people think he's a big deal. I I, I just I, it's completely missed me. I don't understand it. This movie didn't uh, help. It's only done two good movies: Terminator and uh, History X. Oh yeah, he, he's right, at right. like every convention now. He does a lot of conventions. I'm not surprised. Um, and he probably charges way too much. I'm sure, but it and like yeah, it's gorier. But well, like, do you think he'll sign his mugshot? <laughs> You can try. <laughs> it's always funny to watch people get turned away. <laughs> it, I just don't really see any redeeming qualities to this movie. And it's really disappointing that Mary Lambert, like, directed this. I mean, good for her for getting paid and for, like, not turning down big work like this. But at the same time, like, uh, your name's still attached to it. So maybe yeah. care a little bit. Um, yeah, no, it's a pass. There's just, there's, uh, I, I'm tired of talking about it. <laughs> Holly. Um, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> I was I was on the same mindset that you were, Michaela. I was hoping that it was just going to be awesomely bad. It was just going to be, like, funny or something that we would enjoy in some capacity. I knew it wasn't going to be good, but, yeah, no. I, uh, I made a list of pros and cons while I was watching it. Love and it. Um, I'm going to read them to you. My pros, it's pretty, pretty simple. It had decent gore. Clancy Brown was awesome. And Jeff's kitten lives. Those were That's my right. Pros. The cat does live. Yeah, those were my pros. Now, my cons, it looks like a TV movie. Edward Furlong, just in general. <laughs> just Edward Furlong. Yep. <laughs> uh, the dog getting hurt. Cat napping on a bike. Mm. That was a weird choice. N- taking a cat and then riding off on a bike. Yep. Um, Gus, everything about Gus. <laughs> twins. You know how it's I feel about twins. <laughs> <It's just there. laughs> you know how I feel about twins, man. Yeah, that's right. Uh, dead kittens, zombie rape, skinning rabbits, the weird gross dinner scene, weird freaky dream sequences with the dog head, 
uh, Anthony Edwards' Dog Headed Sex, uh, the soundtrack in general, Pug Taxidermy, The Stupid Bully Kid from oh, Big. Pug, Pug Taxidermy is a great band name. It is, isn't it? <laughs> That's a great band name. It is, but it sucked. Um, <laughs> the, the Stupid Bully Kid from Big, Stupid Pointless Plot, Plot Holes and Inconsistent Mythology, The Use of the Line Dead is Better, and The In Memoriam Recap. So I think it's pretty obvious that this movie sucks balls and I don't ever want to watch it again. So giant pass. No, never, never again. Colin, back to you. <laughs> That's amazing because that whole list sounded like uh, one of Joe Bob Briggs drive-in totals <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah, really did. <laughs> um, oh, I forgot to, uh, sorry, in the, uh, the mailbag, uh, Chris Pazian wrote in and said Edward Furlong was the bomb in Pet Cemetery 2. What was written right underneath that, Colin? <laughs> Sean going, boo. <laughs> boo. boo. <laughs> yes, I booed. I booed one of our fans. Boo this man. <laughs> boo this man. Yeah. It's rude. It's rude. Uh, this movie, I fucking hate this movie. I hate it on so many levels. Uh, I hated it when I saw it in the theater. I was betrayed. Betrayed. I think that's the first, uh, you know, emotion that you have when you have a movie, which I mean, yeah. Pet Cemetery to me is a classic of the horror genre. I mean, it's kind of, um, it's like a lowbrow movie, but it still has that, uh, you know, it, it has genuine human uh, moments of tragedy. Uh, I mean, it actually works in that kind of dramatic way. It's like that movie is horrifying. That is a good horror movie. And they've done two more of them, and they both suck. They both miss the mark. They both betray the legacy of the original movie and the novel. Um, this one is just horribly written. I mean, it is. it does feel like we just hired some guy who got out of college, and, you know, it's like, hey, you know, Hey, you're an upcoming screenwriter. We don't have to pay you much. Just go ahead. He actually had written other stuff before this, including a movie called Lionheart, not the Jean-Claude yeah. Van Damme one. Uh, it was something about, like, actually Edward the Lionheart or some kind of fantasy thing. I don't know. But um, it feels like it was put together, like, written. This is like a first draft or something. Like, they didn't actually think any of these characters through. We don't need it. Eh, Pet Cemetery 2. They're coming back. They're going to watch it anyway. doesn't matter what Honestly, the fuck the movie is. Ralph I think Singleton. they just found a couple film reels somewhere, and they're just like, what can we do with this? Let's put it together and call it Pet Cemetery 2. Yeah. I mean, it's an ugly movie. I guess that's uh, number one. It's ugly in, it, in everything about it. The, uh, the design of it, the characterizations, the music... Uh, aside from the atrocious, well, I don't know if there would be atrocious on their own, but the songs don't match anything. And it's like, okay, this is, you know, you're selling your soundtrack album, but the score is one of those like MIDI scores where they don't actually have an orchestra, but they play those fucking like uh, violin keys. So it's, it's like an electric violin synthetic thing and a lot of twangy guitar, which I think they're trying to go for like emotions. And then they get like guitar rock, uh, you know. It's it's a far cry from the Elliot Goldenthal uh, score, the first one, which I love because it's both creepy and very mm -hmm. sad um, sure. and haunting, you know. And I was actually wondering at some points, like, you know, if you put that score on this movie, would it improve them? I think it actually probably would. But, I mean, the movie is just... It would help the tone, but the movie's still bonkers. Yeah, it feels... This feels like a movie that was made very quickly without much thought mm. it was we we're just going to churn it out um and uh, everything about it, i mean aside from being ugly it's gross uh and by that i mean just like the characterizations the tone all of that it's just like this is a gross movie uh, with no fucking logical point or reason it shits all over the mythology of the first one i think it doesn't follow any of the uh you know any anything that's set up from the first one there's really nowhere to go with that story you know, once it gets it, it's the monkey's paw. Once the, the thing comes back at the end, that's the zing, then it's yep. over, you know? Uh, there's really not, because, uh, I mean, that's all that place, the burial ground, that's all it does. 
it brings dead things back to life. <laughs> you know, we, we had the tragedy. There's really not more to explore. So, um, yeah, I, uh, it has the, uh, the 90s studio horror movie stank. This is one of the worst ones. If you haven't <laughs> seen it, uh, I'm sorry, you know, that you suffered this far through, but I'm going to say avoid this like the fucking plague. There's one pet cemetery in the 1989 one. You should see that. Love it. Cherish it. Watch it all over and over and over again and mm-hmm. uh, and avoid the rest. Um, sure. Sean, what did you want? And why why did you do this to us? Because this is the thing. Is a Mika- Holly for? and Michaela hadn't seen it before. You're inflicting this poison upon them. And me, I had suffered through it again. But Sean, why did you do this? You picked it. What was on I did. going through your mind? I did pick it. Um, man, I remember uh, watching this, I think, one time um, back when I was a kid. And uh, as you've, we've seen throughout the years, I bring stuff here because I, I need to deal with it. I have issues. <laughs> um, and so I brought this because I, I needed to uh, uh, put, uh, put it to rest. Like this needed to be the be all end all of how do I feel about Pet Cemetery 2? Because I didn't know how I felt because uh, I didn't remember it. Like Colin said, the one thing that is so very memorable about this is Clancy Brown. And I remember yeah. him. That's the big element I remember from this movie. I didn't remember a lot more of it. I didn't remember all the mom stuff at the end where she's like standing on a bed on fire, melting, screaming dead is better. Totally forgot that, that part. Um I knew it was more gory than the other one. I don't know. But nobody's really, everyone's just kind of shit in this movie. Edward Furlong's mopey. His friend's mopey. The dad's fucking mopey. Everyone's fucking moody in this movie and not in a good way. I don't like them. But Clancy <laughs> Brown is pretty good. <laughs> I don't like them. I, think, I, think, I don't like them. And I think that does a real big disservice to your, to your movie when you don't like anybody. Like, why yeah. would I want to watch this if I just don't like anybody? So I, was, I brought it tonight because I was kind of hopeful, like, maybe there's something there. Um, well, we found out that there's really not anything there. Um, so uh, I'm going to have to agree with the rest of y'all, and we're going to pass on this one. Um, you probably shouldn't watch it. I don't. Just listen to us bag on it, and I think <laughs> you'll be fine. Um, they did Pet Cemetery uh, the first time, and they did it the best time the first time. And, yeah, just stick with that because – Nobody else seems to be able to nail this formula, and we should probably stop that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it looks like it's going to be uh, all round pass on Pet Cemetery Two. Yeah. Looks like we're not picking up that Shout Factory Special Edition. <laughs> Although sorry, I will, Shout I will put a, a plug in again. I think I do this every time we watch Pet Cemetery. You should check out a movie called Wakewood with Aiden Gillen from uh, Game of Thrones. It's a Hammer film that came out in the two thousands, but it has a similar thing going on there, and that was actually too bad. You know, Sean. And you were saying you were bringing it basically to take a look at, uh, you know, to put the final word on it. While we were watching the movie, I'm like, somewhere out there, there's somebody fucking defending this thing. And so I looked up, you know, in defense of Pet Cemetery 2. And sure enough, there's a bloody disgusting article where the author Uh, is saying like how it's actually this really fun time. And so I was wondering that, like, you know, we're we're being we're this whole podcast has been pretty serious (laughs) about this movie. (laughs) Yeah. Which is kind of a contrast to how we did like a movie like Sleepwalkers, which is also a bad movie. But this is the sequel to a really serious movie. Maybe that's why. I think so. Maybe that's if why. We had, if we had like a real serious movie and then the sequel was Sleepwalker. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I think, oh yeah, no, it was, like think about it. Seriously, think about it. If we didn't have a pet cemetery, if this was the only one. We might like it because it's bonkers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But there is that feeling of like they're shitting on something that you love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, so that's called like, having a difference of opinion. Yeah. You don't have to agree. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm saying that the our feeling toward the movie is that they're shitting on something that we love. Yeah, that's I'm why saying it's that's hard a, to, you know, that's a difference of opinion. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well that's uh, Pet Cemetery Two. We hope you won't watch it. We never will again, unless Sean. <laughs> yeah, back. no, never again. Uh, no. I, I thought I had avoided it, but here we are. Uh, so next week <laughs> we're gonna watch a movie that's chosen by Holly. Are we back to Holly again? Yep. Okay, Holly, what are we watching next week? Well, um, Colin, I know you want to get out of the '90s, but we're just not. <laughs> well, there's a possibility watch. you may find one of the good ones. 
Well, Here this we go. week we're going with an action movie called Broken Arrow. Oh, oh yeah. <sighs> Oh boy. Holly and I, Holly and I were. She had was hung up on a couple of her picks, so I showed her my list, and we realized our list had some overlap, and that's where some of these picks. So yeah. now you're just going to start eliminating those. Yeah, well, Phantoms and Broken Arrow. Yeah, those were the ones we had overlap on. Yeah. Ain't it cool? There you go. Ain't it cool? Yeah. yeah. We need a little Travolta this summer. Yeah. Oh, some Travolta would be good. It's been, a, it's been what? Uh, since uh, the fanatic, that was the last time we saw him. Yeah, I could yeah. use a little Travolta. Yeah, All like right. and not where we're bagging on him. Some good Travolta. Yeah. All right. Well, it's next week. John Woo, Christian Slater, mm. and John Travolta. Broken Arrow on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.